transported to another dimension there. <laughs> Hey everybody, I am so excited to be filming today because we're gonna be learning about one of the most interesting instruments that I know of, the theremin. I was introduced to the theremin at a music store and the person behind the counter said, it's an instrument you play by not touching it. My 12 year old head just exploded. It's like, so what, you like throw things at it from across the room or something? Today we have an absolute master of the theremin with us and this is Carolina Ike who's gonna show us the ropes. Yeah. Where do we even start with the theremin? If you, you know, know a little bit about the history of electronic music, um, you might have heard of the theremin as it's one of the first electronic yeah. musical instruments. I heard that it was the first. Is that, is that? Uh, mm, there I was don't... like this big machine there before, so mm -hmm. I tend to say it's one of the first yeah. electronic, but it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty much the mm -hmm. first. From my experience trying to play it, this is an extremely difficult instrument to master. You need a lot of self-control. Yeah. Not only the instrument is the instrument, but you, mm -hmm. the body, your body is yeah. um, combined with the theremin. That means that you need to know your body very well and um, every little movement changes the sound and the pitch. That's maybe what makes it hard. I like to think that it's as hard to play as any other instrument. Yeah. The theremin now is almost a hundred years old and that's kind of a short time for an instrument, which is really different from any other instrument. Yeah, so it needed, yeah. needed a long time um, to develop a playing technique. I found it extremely difficult, yeah. at least. How does this work? There's uh, this box here with electronics inside, mm -hmm. and then the theremin typically consists of two antennas. And we have this upright antenna and this loop antenna. There are other options? There's more than just, because I've only seen the two. Um, yeah, sometimes there's uh, theremins uh, which have only one antenna. And if it only has one, then how do you... Then you don't do pitch. volume, it's just Oh, pitch. really? I have seen um, the, the one antenna versions, mm -hmm. and they're usually sold as like a, a toy, like a sound effect. Yeah, exactly. Because it gets that like, Jake yeah. would know, what, what is it? What's the era of horror movies? Oh, the 50s. The 50s. Sci-fi movies. Yeah, can we get that sound real quick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sounds like the Twilight Zone. Yeah, so we can change the pitch with the right hand. If we go closer to this upright antenna, then the pitch gets higher. And basically everything um, which surrounds the theremin changes the pitch. Yeah. And that's difficult sometimes <laughs> because um, if somebody moves around yeah. here, your, yeah, your, your note is messed up. So, so, so you if better you're make, in a band, you need to have your personal space. You need as your a space player. and it's a very good excuse. Yeah. So it's like, you can um, shield the field, for example, if you put a music stand here. Metal objects, um, all conductive materials mm -hmm. influence the field more because um, we change capacitance. Water or metal, that, that's what will change the, huh. the capacitance. Like maybe you hold a note mm -hmm. and then if I'm a band member that doesn't know better, yeah. whoa, yeah. and I'm, not, I'm pretty far away from it. Yeah. So you really need your space yeah, on stage. I really need my space. But, so on this side it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> because on this side we do the volume. Yeah. And when I go further away here, the volume gets louder. And because of the shape um, of the loop shape, the antenna reacts differently. So it's more up and down. And to the side, it doesn't really matter so oh, much. Oh, okay. So if, even if I'm like, if I'm rocking it. Wow. Okay, uh -huh. I'll stay still. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> On mine as well, you can also change the pitch there. Say where a C note is, is always yes. changing. We have different knobs here on the instrument and it mm. looks a bit different on different instruments. Yeah. But what's always the same is the pitch knob and the volume knob. Mm -hmm. The pitch knob changes the pitch field and I adjust the field to my surrounding and to my body. Mm -hmm. So and, and by the field, do you mean how far it extends or what yes. notes are in that? How far it extends. So. Let's say <laughs> this is the whole range. Yeah, what's the lowest? This is the lowest. Whoa. Yep. If you have a sub bass in the yeah. hall, you can really make yeah make do, the hall shake. So I use the pitch knob mm -hmm. to change the field, so that I can set it to my surrounding and to my body. And I check where the lowest note is. Um, and there's a point where we don't hear sound at all because yeah. that's called zero beat. I basically want the lowest note at my body. Uh -huh. 
So I will adjust the field so that the whole range is in front of me. And does that change depending on other factors or what environment you're in? Yes, or it, it changes. Um, like if we would um, move away one camera, um, it would change and then really? we would need to adjust it. Yeah. Wow. So it's it's picking up, I mean, it might be stuff we don't hear, but it's how far does the range go? Theoretically endless, but then of course um, there are you know things in the way, so it will yeah. stop the field. When you start to practice, you need to set up everything then tune. So having like exact muscle memory of where, say, a C is, is just right out the window. Unless you're always playing in the same room. So, no, you want to adjust the field. Oh, you adjust so, it, so... Okay. So it's every time the same, so mm -hmm. that you know my C is here. Okay, and then what do the other knobs do? We can change some timbres. Let me... Yeah, th this, yeah. this spooky one I chose. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go full spooky. I love the spooky setting. That's probably what most people know the theremin for, I would assume. Is it, is well, I hope that changes. Yeah, yeah. Let me show you a different setting. Yeah. Um. It's like having a, a viola almost with an infinite bow. Yeah. This one I got a while ago. It just has waveform? Yes, so you can kind of choose your own um, sounds. On this one you have five presets and then you can choose your own sounds as well. Mm -hmm. What's your main sound that you use? This is the one I really use like almost yeah. always, um, especially with classical music, like with mm -hmm. classical and even guitar. You yeah. know, it really makes as well. Do you know Somewhere Over the Rainbow? Oh. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> This would be like yeah. the sound I usually use. You also have a really interesting pedal setup. Delay, reverb, is that pretty crucial to the theremin? Is that always on the delay? Uh, no, it's not always on, but yeah. I like I like to use it just because you know, the theremin is a monophonic instrument. Mm -hmm. So after a while, it can get a bit boring. The like delay adds a bit of depth. And then I have a harmonizer, which mm -hmm. makes the monophonic instrument a polyphonic instrument. Very cool. It really like, fills know, it out. Violin players, cello mm -hmm. players, they have to practice so much to play like, perfect octaves and yeah, fifths. Yeah, yeah. So and I just press the button and <laughs> I'm like, I got my octave. Uh -huh. Fifth. So with all the knobs on there, essentially it's all just adjusting the tone. Then we have three different registers. So we have the lower register, and the middle one, and the high one. And 
then we have where I change the timbres. This one's just adjust. It's also for the timbres, but with more mm -hmm. fine. Just more fine tuning. What is the technique to knowing where the where the notes are, how to get a mm -hmm. half step, whole step? Our notes are everywhere. Yeah. Right? You can play a note here, here. So when I play precise notes, I limit myself to one line, to one mm -hmm. invisible string that goes from the antenna right straight to my body. Mm -hmm. So on this line, we have all notes we need. Yeah. How I find the notes is that I will measure the air with my hand. I use one length of a hand as a measurement. I call this position one. And when I stretch out my hand, I have a length of a hand. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's position eight. And I want, well, what I want to hear within these two positions is an octave. Oh, so, so there's a whole octave just in, just in this. Just in one hand. Wow. If that's not the case, I have to need to tune the theremin. The lowest notes at your body, and then ideally you already get the octave. Yeah. And if not, you just make little changes, mm -hmm. and it should be, you know, the octave should be fitting yeah. in your hand. And then this way, I can play all the octave in the whole range. Little change needed here. Yeah, so this is how I measure mm -hmm. all the whole range. And then once I've done that, I can play a scale um, by just moving my fingers and without moving my arm to not mess up my measurement. Yeah. What you do when you learn the theremin is you learn these it's 13 positions for, mm -hmm. for every note. When I invented this method, my goal was that... Oh, so this isn't the standard... I'm really happy to see that many people um, use this method now. Mm -hmm. So my idea was that I do not have to hear the note um, in order to play it in tune. I know I wow. got the right note just because I know my position. Up until now, I would have thought that that just wouldn't be possible on this instrument. Yeah, so you go from eight, and then five, from eight to five, you use only your fingers. Yeah. And then from five to one, you use the wrist mm -hmm. and um, the fingers. You just learn step by step. So if you're in, I don't know, D major. If I, if I uh, change the key, then I change the position. Yeah, of, uh, and then you just have that muscle memory for all the notes. Mm -hmm. I hadn't, so that's how you have so much control of it. Mm -hmm. There are people who use a tuner, so you can, you know, see your note, and that that's very oh, convenient. I, yeah, I could see how that would um, be useful. For now, I, I just, you know, hear my note very quietly before I play, mm -hmm. and then I know which note I'm starting on. I use the monitor only with the theremin, like mm -hmm. not. I I don't have any other instrument in my monitor. Yeah. When you play the guitar, you get some feedback from the guitar, yeah, yeah. but I don't get any yeah, feedback here. Yeah, there's nothing here. resonating so here. I need, yeah, I need the monitor as, as the instrument. I want to try to jam, get a good jam in before. Yeah, sure. And then I'll try to yeah. uh, figure it out. <laughs> Have you been playing theremin professionally? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. When I invented my own technique, and I was I was about sixteen. There from there on, it yeah. played more. Yeah. Do you tour a lot? It seems when we reached out to you, it was kind of like, oh, you know, I'll be here, 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 and here all over uh -huh. the world. You know? Yeah. So I'm I'm basically on tour all the time, uh -huh. and I play my solo things like with theremin and voice, mm -hmm. uh, looping stuff. I play classical music mainly with with some. Um, pianist or with orchestra. Where was this invented then? So the theremin was invented in, in Russia, hmm. but there are theremin communities around the world. So, you know, in Japan, we have a big crowd playing cool. theremins in Chile. Um, 
there's a festival being organized every year. Where could people find We Are Touring? Uh, the, uh, I'm, I'm bad with self-promotion. Right. On my lap line. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the guitar? It was heavy. Yeah. I guess you're used to playing instruments where you don't even touch them. Oh man, I don't feel like that. <laughs> <I'm supposed to. laughs> well, I think we're in the same boat here. <laughs> Hit the this Did the it? third fret on the highest string. What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> One finger here. Yeah. Yep, and then strum everything except for these two lower ones. Hey everybody, uh, no normal sponsor for this video. We are gonna wait until we got one to put this out since these are a bit more expensive, but I was just too excited about this video to wait um, until we got a sponsor. So I wanted to take this time to say thanks to the people on Patreon. They're the reason why we can do stuff like this without always totally relying on sponsorships. Um, so yeah, thanks so much to them. If you would like to be a patron, uh, it is right here and you can see all these videos before they come out for a dollar a month and then there's other tiers like commentary and stuff. It's like it's kind of like buying the DVD extras <laughs> and then on our side of things it just makes our jobs a whole lot easier. So thanks so much for that. And yeah, okay, back to the video. Yeah. So now you just um write yeah, one more yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then go. <laughs> there's nothing to okay. there's nothing to interact with. Okay. And there's this green button in the middle and you put it up. Okay. And when you raise this hand and you get the sound. Let me come a bit forward. Yeah, on the. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> on the edge of my seat here. <laughs> Put both feet down because yeah, you need stability. Posture. Yeah. Otherwise, um, if you move, then you change the sound. Let's see how it reacts to your to your body. Yep. Very good. Take the note towards you. Okay. We need to compress the field a tiny bit to the right. Okay. A little bit back to left. Yeah, because I want it to be yeah. right here. Mm -hmm. There you go. Ooh. All right. Oh, that's so now. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like you're starting up a motorcycle or something. <laughs> Let me try just one note. Okay, let's that's probably one a good note. place to start. Yeah. If I breathe. Yeah, you just don't breathe. Yeah, <laughs> you don't breathe while playing theremin uh, at all. No. Okay. Do you want a different note? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's try a, a, what a, a D. A D? Yeah. Which one is that? That is your one string away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I put a lot of vibrato nice. in it, then. Yeah, that's the common way to cover up. Yeah, it's just put a ton of vibrato in it. It's like, yeah. the D's in there somewhere. Yeah, you know? somewhere. Can I get a G, uh, G chord? I'll, tr I'll try to do a melody. There you go. Posture can be whatever with the guitar. Yeah. In fact, the more movement, the better if you're on stage. But like, if you're, even if you're bobbing your head, you're like. Yeah. Yeah, bobbing your head doesn't yeah, work. Go like this. Yeah. Play that note. Okay, silence. And now change to position one. And play. Hi. Oh my god! <laughs> yes! Nice! That totally works! Right? Wow! Good! That's awesome! Shall we add some delay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's add a whole chord. <laughs> <laughs> that slide with the chord is... That's... Whoa. Yeah. Alright, I got the octave. Keep, it's it's just like when I was really concentrating on my hand movement, I was able to get it. But then, if I'm, I find that if I'm concentrating on the sound, then I don't. This is unlike playing any other instrument I've ever played. Your body positions is what changes the note yes. rather than, mm -hmm. you know, a fretboard. Or I never think like not doing something would mean it would be too loud. 
like if if I'm playing too loud on a guitar or drums, it's because yeah. I'm putting a lot of energy. I know into it. it's it's so confusing. It's yeah. always the opposite. And it's so easy to just be you know take your hand off and then all of a sudden it's so loud. Coming in today, I was like, okay, we're gonna get it to where like if you're playing one chord, I can go up a scale. That was that was my goal. Now that seems like an impossible mountain to climb, but I think I'm gonna give it a try. Okay. Uh, there, Ave Maria was in there somewhere. I recognize it. Yeah, <laughs> I at least played it well enough to recognize it. Can you teach me a different chord? Yeah, what else we got? C major seventh is my favorite chord. These two right there. Put your first finger on this guy, and then if you just strum through all the strings. Yeah, bam. Okay. My fingers hurt already, so. <laughs> <laughs> I've just never had to think about, you know, Posture. being still while mm -hmm. playing. Oh, wow, that, 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 that was perfect. Okay, so if I make that this shape. Alright, alright. That was that was pretty it was pretty good. Good start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got one more in us. All right. Okay. Maybe two strums of the G, two strums of the C. You just give me a little like this. It's really hard for me to do oh. anything. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'll just blink at you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When a lot of blinks, it's core changes. All right. I'm ready. <laughs> I think we, we got it. It's probably as good as I'm gonna do. Yeah, same here. <laughs> what I first did when I got my theremin, mm -hmm. it was like a, a Patreon perk. Shout out to the people on Patreon, thank you so much. And it was once it got to a certain amount, I would need to buy a theremin and make a song with it. Honestly, it was a lot of me doing this. And I had like spots on the ground where I could stand, where I could get like a few notes. Mm -hmm. um, but the first thing I did with it was I plugged it in and just put it on the ground and then put out some food for our cats to see how they would react to it. And it was yeah. a good time. Yeah. It was hilarious. I did that same with my bunnies. Yeah. Oh, cool. Do your bunnies like it? Yeah, my bunnies can play it with their ears. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah. Well, that's as far as I'm going to get with the theremin today. Um, for more, Carolina, check out the links in the description. Uh, for a lot of amazing theremin playing and we'll see you here on the channel soon if you'd like to subscribe also shout out to the people on patreon thank you so much uh we'll see you soon all right i'm ending on a on a, a really great performance <laughs>